Water, a necessity for all life. Without it, we wouldn't be here. 71% of our Earth's surface is covered by water, and 97.5% of that is salt water. The remaining 2.5% is fresh drinking water. It is the only water that us humans can survive on. But even that water is bad for you if not purified, as there are many unwanted items that could contaminate the water and which you would not want to consume. Today, we'll be showing you the history on the process of water purification from the past to present. In the 20th and 21st century, water quality has become even more important and numerous methods of water purification and filtration have been developed greatly. All right, let's jump back to the start. In the olden time, water purification wasn't a huge issue and wasn't really looked into. Most people would just rely on the taste and look of the water to decide if it was clean enough to drink or not. If it had a pleasing taste, then it was thought of as pure, and if it was somewhat bitter, it wasn't. They would also use herbs and flowers to try to purify the water, but obviously that wasn't effective enough for it to be drinkable. The Egyptians, on the other hand, used a much better method. After realizing that herbs had a minimal to no effect on the water, they learned that boiling the water over a fire or placing it in sunlight was a better way. In 1627, the history of water purification continued. Sir Francis Bacon started to experiment seawater desalination. He tried to remove salt particles from the water with an unsophisticated version of a sand filter. Although it didn't work, it did encourage further experimentation by other scientists. Later purification methods included using slow sand filters, which was invented by Lucas Antonius Porteus, an Italian physician. Later, in 1854, they used chlorine to purify the water since some diseases were still being spread even after the sand filters. But the victory obtained by the invention of chlor chlorination did not last long. Since there were some negative effects discovered such as chlorine vaporizes much faster than water, which was linked to and caused a type of respiratory disease, which made scientists look for a new water disinfectant. Calcium hypochlorite and ferric chloride were mixed in a drinking water supply in Belgium, resulting in both coagulation and disinfection. In 1890, America started building large sand filters to protect people's health. These actually turned out to be a success, and instead of slow sand filters, they made rapid sand filters. Waterborne illnesses also became less and less common. Now water in many places are very similar. However, there can still be contamination, causing sickness and diseases from waterborne germs. For example, Cryptospidorium, E. coli, Hepatitis A, Guardia in in intestinalis, and other pathogens. The new system for water filtration, however, is quite effective and eliminates almost all unwanted bacteria. There are four steps to the process. First, it is coagulation and flocculation, where chemicals with a positive charge are added to the water. This neutralizes the negative charge of dirt and other particles in the water, which causes the particle to form larger particles called flock. Next, sedimentation is when the water passes through a chamber and here the flock particles fall to the bottom and leave the water. Then the filtration step is where the water goes through a series of filters and sand of sand, gravel, and charcoal to remove the dust, bacteria, and viruses. Finally, the disinfective stage where the disinfective, like chlorine, is added to kill any remaining germs while being piped to homes. As you can see, Science and technology plays a huge role in modern system in purifying water. However, though the filtration of water doesn't really play a role on the environment side, it has an effect when, water, when the water is used. For example, the toilet for human waste. The water in the toilet contains harmful bacteria and germs, and sometimes we let the water flow right back into the lake. The reason for why the price is increasing is because there's been a lot of research put into water purification and there's been new and improved methods. This had cost the government a lot of money to put down a new system. However, it is believed that the cost will go down since now the infrastructure of the system is complete. Then the money spent onward will only be spent on maintenance. As you can see, the cost levels from 2000 to 2010. 
This graph shows the amount of people with and without access to clean water, which means that one in every 10 people don't have access to clean water. That's around seven 750 million. This chart shows how bad the water crisis in Africa is. Since an important place as healthcare facility still doesn't have clean water to treat their patients with, with there being 42% of hospitals without clean water to use. There could be some bias in this data since I got this from a website that proposes that we need to help places with no access to clean water. Therefore, maybe they got their sample of data from an area in Africa that has a very low amount of clean water than the rest of Africa. A possible solution for the people who don't have access to purified water would be to use a life straw. A life straw is a straw which contains many filters which can filter 99.9% .9 of stuff that can contaminate or make the water bad to drink.